So this is what I like to call the apple pie. So yeah, so I've got the switch on the side to power it on and off. I've got the front USB, the indicator. I've got the, um, the USB power, HDMI, Ethernet, the white, um, the keyboard dongle, the powered USB hub, the power for that hub. And yeah, I've held it on with magnets. So I don't need to worry about screens when I'm changing the SD card. And I've spray painted it red. So these are the things I've roughly bought. If you want to pause it here, you can. So everything was relatively cheap. But it helped that I had already had some of the tools. And some of the parts as well, like the wires. So yeah, I bought an Apple Airport Extreme. And um, this is basically what it came like. And I was just thinking about how to take it apart. So I realised this came off. And the screws. So if you just take out the screws. I think there's about five of them. But um, I didn't speed this up because I wanted to show the process that I actually went through. So yeah, once you take off the five screws located there, you get this. <clears throat> and yeah, that's just basically the nitty gritty stuff that was in the Apple Airport stream. I bought this, it was faulty. And all I wanted was the actual casing, so that's why I got it so cheap. Just look around on eBay. And there's plenty of them going around. So yeah, they're the heat sinks. I was just figuring out how to actually take them off. What to actually do, really. But yeah, that's just basically it all out. And I was just checking it out. And that's what you get. So that's the empty case ready. Guess I couldn't really count this bit of me just playing with this. But yeah, they're the antennas that were for the the Wi-Fi signal, I guess. Let's plot them on and off. So now, yeah, let's move on. Um, what I found was they were easily came off if you put a bit of solder onto the actual plastic bits. So you can see all them dots. If you put a tad of solder onto them, then um, you could actually take it all apart. And I'll show you this now. Like if you put them through the holes, and then this is how you get actually get the metal and aluminium off as well. Well, metal, whatever metal it is. I decided to actually cut some of the bits off so I can make access for the ports. Uh, I did this with a Dremel and some pliers. So it took quite long with the Dremel because I didn't really have the best cutting um, tool to put on the edge. But um, it did the job. And yeah, if you cut a bit, you can just ply them off. And it's quite, it's easy that way. So yeah, I just put it in to show that I freed up quite a lot of space. So yeah, I actually decided to cut out the old ports because I realised that um, I actually wanted to create my own bit there to maximise the space that I was actually using. So I got some acrylic, some another piece of white acrylic, and cut, um, drew out the part that I was going to cut out and decided where I actually wanted the ports. This was actually really hard to cut out because I didn't really have the right tools. So I just made a do with what I had. It was also quite difficult to figure out how to get the USBs, the um, powered USB hub to fit in nicely with all the HDMI ports and stuff. But yeah, as I cut it out, I just used some wet and dry sandpaper to just make it smooth. Try to make it look a bit better. I didn't really have a block, so I just used that medicine box. But yeah, as you can see, I cut some holes for the switch. I lined it with a bit of um, electrical tape. I put in a front USB. I decided to go with the front USB purely for convenience. So when it was placed on a desk, I could I wouldn't need to reach for the back. 
and that front USB is going to go directly to the actual Raspberry Pi and the ba uh, back USB hub would actually be the powered hub and that will help power stuff like hard drives etc and as you can see the cutting out wasn't the best but I did make up for it by putting a bit of glue in but yeah I shortened down the USB wire so it was um, going to fit nicely into the Pi I stuck all the ports into it I just covered the ports with a bit of electrical tape and then hot glued it in as you can see it'll be nicely convenient with all the ports at the back as you can see I can uh, I wired in all the um, things and put it all together I this is what I did I just split the power cables so and this is how I spliced the wires to make them shorter and you do this to actually make the inline switch yeah sorry about the focus I was using my phone camera so it wasn't that great but yeah they're just the wires it looks a bit messy but I did neaten them up by splicing them and electrical taping the parts that didn't look too great and also to make it um, so the wires should, wouldn't short out by having contact with each other but yeah that's just showing the LED light how it's going to work so basically I, I used it to power through the hub so then I knew that there was power going to everything if that switch was on if the light actually did come on and I wanted to occupy that um, the light hole that already came with the airport extreme so I thought that was just a nice added touch really That's just the Wi Fi dongle that I put in, so yeah, it had Wi Fi. And that's just me testing um, it to see all the ports, um, if that everything fits correctly. And then I plugged it in with the hard drive as well, just to check out if everything was working. So that's just the power for the hub, the USB hub, obviously, the Ethernet, HDMI. I found using my old Sky cable was the best, so it kept the CEC functionality. So that's how you can actually change the. Um, like you can actually use the Pi with your TV remote and um, obviously the hard drive plugged into the powered hub suits so yeah I spliced everything again to make it all fit nicely as you can see I actually didn't need to actually put any mounting holes into the Pi because everything was quite snug as it was so I literally just plugged it all in and it held the pie in place. So yeah, that's everything nearly all. Well, you could argue how neat it is, but I think to get it all in there was decent. You just got to spend some time cutting up wires. Yeah, that's just a bit of tape. Take that off. So yeah, I've just plugged it all back in again, just to make sure now that I've spliced everything that it's working. So I've got the Wi-Fi dongle there as well. And I've also got the Ethernet so I can choose. And that's just some South Park. But yeah, I've um, installed Open Elec onto the system, because I found it was much snappier than Raspberry MC. And yeah, it's got the new Glatham XBMC. But yeah, I definitely found Open Elect to be much faster and much more reliable, considering the new updates for Raspberry MC haven't been up to scratch. But yeah, just reaffirming the Open Elect.
they did apple pie. Well, that was quite catchy. So yeah, that's just leave it plugged in just to see how everything was working. So yeah, as you can see, I cut out a tiny bit out of the base just to accommodate the USB, just because they're rubbing a bit and it wasn't quite sitting. But yeah, I just literally did that. And with the screws, I put the screws back in, but I found that the screws weren't holding too great because I ended up having to put um, Xbox Torx screws in to make it hold, but I realised they weren't quite long enough. So this is just a set I just put in just to show where I realised after that it wasn't really the best plan to use screws. Also, just the inconvenience of having to unscrew everything every time you want to change the like SD card. So I did actually put an SD card extender. But yeah, that's how everything was looking. So yeah, now I've actually glued. Uh, I didn't use hot glue this time. I used actual adhesive, plastic adhesive. And I glued um, magnets on each side and then also on the lid. These magnets were pretty cheap as well. I think they were like £3 for a pack of 50. So, And yeah, now it's easier because everything just snaps on. And that way you don't need to worry about taking off screws every time you want to change something. Or you want to just simply get out the Raspberry Pi. But yeah, I decided to cover a bit of tape. Because this was just a process because I was thinking uh, if it would look nice with a black border going around. But then I realised that I didn't really like it too much. And that's when you see that it becomes red. But yeah, this is just me masking up um, the stuff ready. So I masked up the USB um, wireless uh, mouse and also the keyboard. And I literally sprayed the keyboard to make it match with the pie. I used um, double acrylic red and also clear lacquer. Just to give it the glassy finish and to protect the paint. So that's just painting the pie. I think red looked wicked. And it helps the whole Rasby pie kind of theme. But yeah, so that's all painted red. Where there was holes where I actually put, uh, when I cut out the, the gaps for the USBs and stuff, I actually put some hot glue in there and tried to sand it out. And um, you'll be able to tell with these upcoming shots. Yeah, this is just a bit tricky using only one hand. But yeah. I just tried to show the man bits are still all great and what not. Yeah, so just going around the pie. See them gaps there where you can just see a bit of texture? I, d I had to fill them in. And I think it doesn't look too bad when you look at it, so in actual real life, so it's, it does a job. I think the keyboard matches quite nicely as well. Yeah, it's just I made sure I spray painted everything to make it match. I also found later on that if you just power it through the USB hub, so you don't actually need two mains plugged in, you just need to pl plug in the, the USB power lead and leave the USB micro USB out, and you can still power the Raspberry Pi and a hard drive. That would save you from plugging in two separate um, power leads. So if you have any uh, questions about this, you can just put them down below.